morning my diamond painting friends this is going to be the crochet tutorial for our tutorial Tuesday um, and it is going to be on the double crochet stitch um, it, which is the US term for it and we are going to basically start the way that we have been starting this one is going to be very similar to the stitch that we did last week which was the half double crochet stitch so we're going to make our um, slip knot there and then we are going to chain do our starting chain and I think I'm going to chain 10 there's four seven eight nine and ten now when you are working your half, sorry, excuse me, when you are working your double crochet, you're going to chain up two. So I've chained 10 as my starting chain, and then I'm going to chain another two. Now, I put my thumb here for a reason, and so what we're going to do, these two stitches here, this chain of two, is going to act as our first double crochet. So then the way to actually do this stitch is you're going to yarn over. You're not gonna go in here, you're gonna go in here. So you're actually going to go into the third chain from the hook. You're gonna go in here. You're gonna pull up a loop. You'll have three loops on your hook. You're going to pull through two of those loops, not all three like we did last week, just two of them. You're gonna have two loops on your hook again. You're gonna yarn over and pull through those two. So we're gonna do that again. You're gonna yarn over. You're going to insert into your chain stitch. You're going to pull up a loop. There's three loops on your hook. You're going to yarn over and pull through the first two loops. There's two loops on your hook you're going to yarn over and pull through those two. So we'll do that again. Yarn over, insert, pull up a loop, three loops on your hook, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. That is how you do a double crochet. So you can see that's kind of how it looks. There are going to be some larger spaces in this piece than what you would normally see or what we have seen in any of our other ones. And that's okay. You're going to yarn over, insert, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. So we're going to just keep doing that all the way to the end of the chain. And I'm only going into the front loop. You can go into both loops if you prefer on your stitch. It is completely up to you. It does affect how it looks just slightly, but not in any major way. Pull through two and pull through two. And again, the same thing applies when you're doing this one as it applied doing all of the other ones. You want to make sure that you're keeping your tension even so that your stitch will be even. So you can see I got a little bit loose on this one here, but it's not too terrible. So we're going to keep doing that down to the end. Don't forget to do that very last stitch that looks different, just like last week. And then that is your knot there. Okay, so this is what it will look like when you've done your first row. What you're going to do is you're going to chain two. There's one and two, and then you're going to turn your work. And again, we turn that counterclockwise. Now, 
You can see here is the stitch at the bottom of your chain. We will not use that stitch because this is going to count as your stitch here. So that basically would act like we put it here and did our double crochet stitch, but this is our turning chain. So we're actually going to go into this next stitch, which is over here, not this one, this one. So you're going to yarn over, go in here, and continue to stitch. In this row, I am going through both loops in the top of my stitch. So you can see here's the front loop and the back loop there. I am going into both of those. This stitch does build fairly quickly because it is tall. This is the tallest one that we have done so far. So this one feels like you feel like you're getting a little further in your project because it's a little taller than the other stitches are. So it takes up more real estate vertically than the other ones that we've done so far. Now, when you get to this point right here, you're going to look at this and this is where most people would stop and go to their next row, at least most beginners. And this is where a lot of people have trouble keeping their edges straight. You still have a stitch here that you have to go into. So if you remember last week, we told you to count. So there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten on the first row. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine which means you're missing a stitch here. If we do not go into this chain, your edges are not going to be even. They're going to zigzag as you're working your project up. So you have to put in one more into the top of this turning chain over here. And that will keep your edges even. So if you put 10 down here or 15 or 12 or whatever your count is, that same number has to be in your next row unless your pattern calls for something different. But just working up, just the regular double crochet stitch, if you wanted to make a blanket out of just double crochet stitch, a lot of people do that as their beginning blanket, the very first one that they ever make is they do a double crochet blanket. And so you have to do that last stitch, that's where most people get off um, on their counts and then their edges kind of zigzag. So again, you get to the end, you're going to chain two, you're going to turn your work, and we always turn it the same way, it doesn't change. Yarn over, you're not going to go into that stitch, you're going to go into this next one. So you're skipping this one, and you're going to go in here. And you're going to continue your double crochet to the end, that's two, there's three, four, five, whoop, six, seven, Eight. Did I miscount? Seven, eight. Yep, I just I miscounted. I didn't count my first chain, so that's actually nine. And into the turning chain at the end gives us our tenth stitch. So that right there is three rows of double crochet. With straight edges. So I'm going to tie off there because I did three rows on all of my other projects and you can see how much faster that one went. Uh, 
so we're going to tie off at our ends sorry guys the video cuts off here so next week we're going to be making a pot holder um, and I, this is where I talk about the cotton yarn all right guys I'm back really quick these are the cotton yarns that I have um, they're the sugar and cream by Lily these came from Joann's but you can get them just about anywhere that you can buy cotton yarn um, including Walmart um, I'm pretty sure I've seen them at Michaels as well so what you want to do is you want to look on the back on the label just like I taught you to do back in the very first video and you can see these are a size 4 worsted weight it gives you your suggestions it tells you that they can be washed and dried which is always a good thing when you want something for the kitchen that's going to get dirty and the most important thing you got to look and make sure that it is 100% cotton so that is what we're wanting with this yarn you do not have to buy yarn to do this with if you do not want to make pot holders or you do not want to make um, washcloths for the kitchen or anything or even for the bathroom um, a lot of people will make face scrubbies to take off their makeup with these um, so if you want to do something where it's going to get wet or it's going to get um, heat applied to it you definitely want to do that out of cotton yarn not acrylic yarn so I already had these I think this one was about two dollars to purchase this is the larger size and I think it was about three dollars of course I use coupons with just about everything these do have the center pools <clears throat> that we're going to be using and different things. So I'm going to be using one of these two colors that I already have for next week. If you would like to make something with me next week, um, you are more than welcome to make it out of your practice yarn. Um, and again, then purchase the cotton if you would like to do it out of the cotton. Um, Remember, guys, you don't have to be perfect. You just got to do things. Hence, this week, I'm not perfect this week. But I got the video done, and it will be posted for you. I know a lot of you are really enjoying um, the crochet uh, videos, and I do appreciate that, letting me share my love of crochet with you. So, um, there will be another video up on Friday that is diamond painting related for those of you that don't enjoy the crochet tutorials. Um, but until I see you next time, guys, Remember, you don't have to be perfect. You just got to do things. See ya.